This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. In the heart of the busy trading city of Sasaram, the emperor lies. The 15th century emperor of India, Fariduddin Sher Shah Suri, buried here in 1545 AD. Sher Shah Suri spent his childhood here in Sasaram and he developed into a strong administrative unit as well as an important trading outpost. He also constructed the Grand Trunk Road here more commonly known as the GT Road and the Grand Trunk Road still bifurcates Sasaram. Today, Sasaram is a small town, but its prized possession is this Sher Shah's tomb, which stands erect in the middle of artificially created pond, and it's a great specimen of Pathan architecture. The emperor had built the Grand Tomb for himself. It stands in the middle of an artificially created lake a beautiful garden and a grand tree-lined path leads up to the main structure. For a moment, the picture of the path and the tomb remind you of the Taj Mahal, a similar layout. But of course, they are poles apart in style. Sher Shah's tomb is much simpler. A big dome on a chamber, rising to a height of 122 feet from the base. The chamber is octagonal, a veranda runs around. The exterior of the structure is grand, it's made of sandstone. The arches and the doorways, carved with calligraphed verses from the Quran. Shesha's tomb is a huge dome. It's three-storied and the dome is probably the second largest in India. It stands a hundred feet over the ground. The lake all around it is probably just excavated to provide a quaint view of the tomb and the glazed tiles with which it was decorated must have added to the reflection but now very few remain. Inside, this is where the emperor lies with his 23 generals. In the center, is the tomb of Hassan Khan, the emperor's father. There are stairways on each side, leading down to the lake. It was constructed as an island tomb, with no access to the mainland. Any visitors were provided rafts. This connecting pathway was constructed much later in 1881. The tomb, a reminder forever, Sher Shah Suri, who had risen to become the most powerful ruler of the subcontinent since Ashok. He today rests in his impressive mausoleum, marking out his role in India's history. drive off the main Muzaffarpur Modihari road takes us to Kesarya. A small city famous for holding in it what is possibly the largest Buddhist stoop or monument in the world. From a distance, it looks like a mammoth mound of soil covered with stray vegetation. Even as you are wondering if you've reached the right place, the Kesarya stoop comes in full view. It's grandeur, unmistakable. Only one side of it has been excavated. The rest still under the earth. But from what we can see, it is massive. A circumference of 386 meters, according to the learned men who have dug it out. The circular base rises in terraces. Six of the terraces are clearly visible. 
there are a few more layers still underground. One cell here shows an entire layer yet to be excavated. The excavation was started in 1998 by the Patna wing of the Archaeological Survey of India. Till then, the locals treated the hillock as a picnic spot, a place that in the 6th century BC closely linked to Gautam Buddha's life. There are so many tales of Buddha in Kesarya. This entire region had great Buddhist influence. While researching on the various events of Buddha's life, it becomes evident that Kesarya was very special to him. While on his final journey from Vaishali to Kushinagar, Buddha stopped at Kesarya for a night and it was here that he announced the news of his impending nirvan, meaning his death, to his disciples. The disciples were really, really sad and refused to leave him. So he gave them his bowl as a souvenir here in Kesarya. A stoop was built on the site following a tradition in which all important places and events in Buddha's life are marked with monuments. In Chinese traveller Yun Sang's diary, it is called Ke Saputta. The stoop is made of thin bricks laid in an equally thin layer of mud and mortar capped by a large cylindrical drum of solid brickwork. 